everybody welcome back to my channel I'm in my workroom because the lighting in the living room sucks right now it's overcast it's supposed to rain so better video or lighting in here um, so I'm gonna do my weekly wrap-up and I have a small book haul uh, so first I finished everything I never told you by Celeste Ng and I gave it a three. None of the characters were likable. Um, it's like a little fa family saga. Um, not really a saga, I guess. But it's about a girl who dies. Um, and what happens to the lead up to her death um, and kind of how it happens. There's cheating in it. I didn't agree with that. Um, at first, I liked Hannah. Lydia is the one that dies. I, but Hannah just. The parents are atrocious. And they treat the kids like crap. Um, they ignore everybody but Lydia. The son gets into Harvard. And me. I guess it's okay like really so I I had issues with it especially with the uh, the cheating um, and the focus on one of the three children they had an older son and they had a younger daughter in between Lydia Lydia is the middle one I know I'm not doing it justice but it's really there's not much you can say about it it's just a family dealing with death and why it happened how it happened and yeah so then I finished a salted pretzel by Laura Bradford it's book two in the Amish mystery series um, I gave it a three as well it was very repetitive she kept saying how Daniel Lapp is an Amish man who had to sell his part of his property to a farmer so that he could focus on making toys almost every chapter once it is first revealed that he had to do that almost every chapter she says it and then um, but it starts off with there's this Amish festival that happens every year and a man had come to town to use the Amish men to make toys for his company and like a back to basics toys wooden toys and then it's found out that he's not using the Amish men. He's actually stealing their designs and then he's murdered. So you don't really get to see him as a character because, you know, it happened so fast. But it, it the final twist was nice. I didn't see that one coming. I had guessed something else and it went way on a different level. But yeah, it was very repetitive. It wasn't really, she's very wishy-washy when it comes to the love triangle, which I'm not a fan of either because she's English. Um, there's a former English or former Amish who's turned English to become a police officer. And then there's an Amish man. And since she's English, she can't be with the Amish man, but she likes them and it's just, oh, I don't like love triangles that much. So three. And then I finished Forever Terry, edited by Daryl Fox's brother, and it's a legacy of letters. I gave it a five. It made me cry. Um, for those of you who don't know, Terry Fox is a Canadian boy who in 1978 or 79 had cancer in his leg and had to have it amputated. And then he decided to do a run across Canada um, to raise money for cancer in 1980. So he started in Newfoundland on April 12th 1980 I think it was April 12th and then um, he came through our town August 12th I think and I was four I was almost five I was four and September 1st just before he hit Thunder Bay he had to quit because his cancer went into his lungs so He's a very inspiring young man, or he was. 
because he passed away the next year in June, I think. Um, but he went 3,317 kilometers. He, he ran a marathon a day, which is 26 kilometers on one leg, like, and a prosthetic leg. So he was very awe-inspiring. So it was nice to see um, all these Canadians coming together to write what he meant to them. And um, so that is his family. He's in the middle. The one who's editing this book is up here, Daryl. My favorite picture is this one of him. So yeah, he, it, there's a street here that's named after him. And I watched it be built um, because I lived right across the street from it. So that was nice. But yeah, it's, it's very awe-inspiring and it's very heartbreaking as well. Um, it's very inspirational because no matter what he was going through, he still managed to do this run um, until he couldn't. So, yeah. Um, it's just 40 letters plus um, an introduction and a afterward an epilogue of people that he's inspired and how that he's inspired them. So, five stars. And then, so now I'm currently reading, I'm still reading The Cave Dreamers by Jean Williams. Um, family saga, not family saga, generational saga of how this cave came to be, how they become the cave dreamer, well, dreamers. And every part, it's in six parts, and then there's several chapters in each part. And each part is a different generation, but it's not direct generations. It's like 500 years generations. So I'm in part five, and it's like the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, it starts off in like caveman time. And then from what I'm seeing, it looks like the sixth part is the same characters as the fifth part. So I'm not sure yet because, excuse me, I've got a long way to go before I'm at that part. Uh, I'm here. This is the rest of part five and there's part six. So it's quite a ways. This is for my million more pages challenge. So I'm not focusing on this book as much. That's why it's taking me a while to read it. And then I picked up Dirty by Kylie Scott. It's book one in the Dive Bar series, but I think, like, I'm going to continue it. It's new adult. Um, but I think you should have read, or I should have read, um, uh, the Dive Band series first, because from what I've seen, characters from that series is in this book. They make cameos, so I'll still read this one and then I'll go back and read the other ones because I don't like reading things out of sequence. I, I don't. Um, but I'm just, they just kind of met. She found, It starts off, she's at her wedding and somebody has anonymously sent her a video of her husband making out um, with his best man right before the wedding. So she leaves, she does a runaway bride sort of deal, and then jumps a fence, finds a house that has an open window because she needs to hide, and lands into somebody's bathroom. And then he comes to have a shower. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> and that's pretty much how, how far I've gotten in. So it's funny so far. I'm enjoying it. The books I will probably pick up after that is Sneaky Pie for President by Rita Mae Brown. It's, I think, the 21st in the Sneaky Pie um, series. Cats Who Solve Mysteries, but now is becoming very preachy soapboxy of the author's um, values, ideas, beliefs, that sort of deal. And then uh, The Seven or Eight Deaths of Stella Fortuna by Juliet Grames. It's a family saga. That's all I know about it. Um, and Italy. So I'll probably pick those up. So that's my wrap up for this week. And so I had two books that just came in. I used to get these subscription services, um, The Romance and The Suspense. 
from Harlequin and I had to stop because finances, it's just, it wasn't feasible to be getting them anymore. Um, so they sent me a thing in the mail two weeks ago saying they want to send me two free um, books. I just had to pick if I wanted heartwarming, suspense, romance, or something else. And I picked the suspense. So all I did was open, but I know what two books are in here. But I have no idea what they're about. Um, so the first one is Alice and Brennan's Tell No Lies. I don't know if it's part of a series or what. Um, I've never read anything by her yet. And this was released last year. But the unsolved murder of a young activist leads to the, to the discovery of much darker crimes in New York Times bestseller. Latest thriller. Wow, spelling mistake on the back. To feature, it's spelled F-E-A-U-R-E. The young, edgy detective, Kara Quinn, and the loner FBI agent, Matt Costa. So, sounds like it's a series. Or book three in a series. So, the other two books are probably The Third to Die and The Sorority Murder. So, I'll have to read those first before I pick this up. And the other book is Christina Dodd's Wrong Alibi. In the Alaskan wilderness, the hunted can become the hunter. 18-year-old uh, Evelyn... Jones lands a job in small town Alaska working for a man in his isolated mountain home, but her bright hopes for the future are shattered when Donald White disappears, leaving her to face cha charges of theft, embezzlement, and a brutal double murder. Her protestations of innocence count for nothing. Convicted, she faces life in prison until fate sends her on the run. So again, I don't know if this is a series or if it's just a one-off. It was published in 2020. And she's got other books, so I'll have to look into that. And then they're supposed to be, yeah, all of the cute, and it's purple. A purple bookmark of a cat. That's cool. And I think that's it. Yeah, and it's just the women's health reporter that you get with every um, box. So it's just women's health. All right. So that is my wrap up and book haul for today. <sighs> I hope everybody is doing good. And our weather has been sucky lately. Like one day of good, two or three days of cold. One day of sweltering hot, two or three days of rain. Like it, it has not been a good summer this year. But can't really complain. There's no snow. <laughs> And yes, we've, I've seen snow in May here, so not liking that too much, but we haven't had too many beach days so far, that's for sure. So I hope everybody is doing awesome. Um, let me know what you guys are reading, if you've read any of these, what you thought of them. Um, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and give a thumbs up, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!